Welcome back to the channel guys. It is Humphrey again. And today I wanted to talk about a method on how you can outperform the market through just holding various ETFs in your portfolio so that you don't even have to pick stocks. All you have to do is choose a selection of ETFs. And I'm gonna explain how it works and who it's good for today. Okay, so the official name of this strategy is an all ETF portfolio. It's really good for those that are new to investing and wanna diversify instantly across multiple different companies and different stocks, but it still gives you some control because we can use sector specific ETFs to our advantage depending on the market conditions. While picking 20 or more individual stocks can be really fun, it also requires a lot of knowledge about valuations and financial modeling. And most importantly, it requires a bunch of active time, plus it can be overwhelming and difficult. So that's where our ETF strategy will come in. We'll choose a few ETFs to comprise our portfolio. Now, a quick overview of an ETF for those that are new to the channel. It stands for Exchange Traded Fund. An ETF is just a basket of different stocks. By buying one fund and making that one purchase, you're buying a selection of many different stocks. ETFs usually track an index or a sector, such as an energy specific ETF, which will track the energy sector, or perhaps a healthcare ETF that invests in companies involved in the medical field. ETFs are a bit similar to mutual funds with two key differences. First, ETFs ETFs can be bought and sold during the trading day, just like stocks. Mutual funds, on the other hand, the transactions don't occur until the market closes. Second are expense ratios. So those are fees for ETFs. They are typically way lower than the expense ratio of mutual funds. One of the reasons for this is that most ETFs are passively managed. While mutual funds, on the other hand, they are actively managed by a portfolio manager. So a mutual fund has to basically pay or compensate a active fund manager versus an ETF just operates on its own. If you do wanna learn more about the differences between mutual funds, index funds, and ETFs, I do have a link to a video that I made about a year ago in the description below for that. Okay, now why should you have an all ETF portfolio? The pros include number one, it provides instant diversification. And number two, it saves a ton of time. You won't have to read a ton of quarterly reports, you don't have to do any comparable companies analysis, and you don't even have to do any valuation models. With ETFs, you can pick a macro trend that you think might pick up steam in the years to come, and you can also combine it with a overall market ETF like the S&P 500 or the NASDAQ ETF. We'll talk more about macro trends in just a little bit, but here's an example of how easy making an ETF portfolio could be. Let's say you have a positive outlook on the overall American economy, but also think that electric vehicles will do well in the coming years. And let's also say that you love graphics cards and you realize that the Taiwanese economy is going to do very well in the coming years. Why the Taiwanese economy? Because one of the main semiconductor companies there, TSMC, has a recent investment plan that would be equivalent to 5% of the Taiwanese economy and many semiconductors that are made in graphics cards come from this company. So you like the American economy, electric vehicles, and the Taiwanese economy. What you could do is you could hypothetically buy 50% of ticker symbol VOO. That's the S&P 500 index ETF that tracks the 500 biggest companies in America. You could also buy 25% of ticker IDRV, which is BlackRock's self-driving EV and tech ETF. Lastly, you can add another 25% position in ticker symbol FLTW, which is a Taiwanese ETF. Just like that, you have proper diversification in the S&P 500 index while having exposure to two macro trends that you're bullish on, which are the electric vehicles and the Taiwanese economy. Economy. That's pretty much what an all ETF portfolio is. It's picking quality ETFs that track the overall market and also picking just one or two or maybe a few thematic or sector ETFs that you believe will outperform the overall market. If you choose the right trends or sectors and you invest into them, it's likely that those will bring up the rest of your portfolio in terms of returns. Now, this all sounds great, but there's surely gonna be some downsides to an all ETF portfolio. So the cons include number one, fees, of course. While ETFs have cheaper fees, fees and mutual funds, they still have fees. It's typically below 1% and that is deducted from the value of your ETF allocation. Since fees compound over time, the longer the investing period, the bigger the loss you'll incur from fees. Now a workaround could be to simply look up the holdings of that ETF and purchase the stocks individually, but that will take a lot of work. And also if you really wanted to do that, the weightings would also get messed up. For instance, with the S&P 500, it would be extremely difficult to purchase the 500 different stocks 
stocks in the index while also having the same weighting as the S&P 500. So ETFs will help you save a lot of time, maintain the same weightings, and personally, I think the small fees are worth it in exchange for some more free time and not doing stock research. The second con of ETFs are lower dividend yields. There are plenty of dividend paying ETFs out there. However, the dividend yields that are offered may not be as high as simply owning a group of individual dividend owning stocks. In addition, the expense ratio that is charged for owning an ETF may also reduce the real dividend yield of that ETF. Now, actually, a lot of stocks in my portfolio are dividend stocks. And if you're curious about which specific stocks that I own, make sure to check out the Patreon linked down below. That's where I divulge my portfolio, let you know anytime I buy or sell a stock. And we also have a great community of like-minded investors, live coaching calls weekly with investment experts. And I think you would really enjoy it there. The last caution I want to mention to you is the temptation of leveraged ETFs. So leveraged ETFs use complicated financial derivatives and debt in order to return 2x or 3x return that you would typically get with a standard ETF. So for example, if you bought a 2x leveraged ETF on the S&P 500, when the S&P 500 moves 2%, your ETF position will move 4% respectively. While this seems like a no-brainer investments, especially if things go up, there's more than what meets the eye. Here, I have a table from Investopedia that shows the returns of a 2x leveraged natural gas ETF. We can see that while the price of natural gas fluctuated but ultimately stayed at $7, you would have still actually lost money minus 2.28% investing through that leveraged ETF. Here's another example. Let's say that ticker symbol SPY loses 10% in a day and goes from $100 to $90. So in order for SPY to go back to $100, it would actually need an 11.11% .11 gain. If you bought a triple leveraged S&P 500 ETF like SPXL, a 10% loss in SPY would equal a 30% loss in SPXL. Then in order for SPXL to go from $70 back to $100, it would require a 42.86% gain, drastically different from the return needed for the normal SPY. So ultimately, I'm not a fan of leveraged ETFs and would recommend to stay away from them, especially if you're investing for the long term and you don't understand them. So now that we've gone over some of the general risks and misunderstandings with ETFs, let's talk about how to choose a few ETFs for your portfolio. When looking at an ETF, there are three things that I'm always looking at before buying. The first is expense ratio. So be sure that the expense ratio is in line with other ETFs that track that same index or similar sector. The second are assets under management. It's important to look for an ETF that has a high assets under management relative to other ETFs that track the same thing. Liquidity is super important and you wanna make sure that you can buy and sell quickly whenever you want. Lastly, the other thing I look at is which stocks are the ETF actually investing into. Ideally, you don't want the top 10 holdings in an ETF to be an oversized portion of the overall ETF. Now, two sites that I think are great for doing research on ETFs are ETFDB.com and ETF.com. When it comes to actually building the ETF portfolio, one of the most important things is to have broad diversification in the market. And the easiest way is through an ETF like VOO or SPY that tracks the S&P 500 or an ETF like VTI that tracks the entire stock market. Now, to keep things simple, I think the majority holding of your portfolio should be at least 50% in an ETF that gives you broad exposure to the overall market. That means you could buy one ETF that tracks the S&P 500, for example, VOO, or a combination of ETFs that track the S&P 500, the NASDAQ, or international markets. The important thing here is to have broad exposure to the market in general. The remainder of your portfolio will look at macro trends to attempt to outperform the market. Market. If the trends don't pan out like you would have hoped, at least the majority of your portfolio is still experiencing the returns of the overall market. Now, keep in mind, this strategy does come with some risk, especially because it's extremely variable depending on what macro trend or sector ETFs that you're investing into. Always try to balance your risk with your time horizon. So the longer you're investing for, the more risk you're going to be able to take. Okay, so let's get into some macro trend examples. Now, here are a couple potential themes that you could look at. These are not recommendations. These are just examples. But the First are home building ETFs. One trend that has been developing for a while is the hot housing market, especially in the United States. So US home building increased to a nine month high in December as multifamily housing projects are surging. A report from the Commerce Department also shows that the number of homes authorized for construction but not yet started surged to a record high last month. This is showing me that there's still a lot of pent up demand for houses as home builders are struggling to meet demand due to labor shortages and supply chain constraints. While some may argue that we're in a housing bubble. Hey, there's a bubble. How do you know? 
Trust me. Studies have actually found that there is a shortage of houses in the US. For years, the US has been behind the curve on home building and builders are only now just beginning to meet this housing deficit. I'll link some articles and research in the description that go more in depth on the topic. But overall, if you believe in this thesis, there are ETFs such as ticker symbol XHB or ticker symbol ITM that allow you to invest in home building. Another potential macro trend could be the airline industry. So the past two years have been a nightmare for that industry with the pandemic going on and the emergence of various variants causing mass flight cancellations. The airline industry really isn't going away though. So even though it's been quite turbulent for the airlines, <laughs> see what I did there, turbulent, airlines. So while it has been tough for them, as the economy reopens and restrictions fade away, we could see airline stocks fly to the moon. Many airlines are currently trading below their historical average valuations and outlook is improving for the industry as a whole. Southwest recently posted its first quarterly profit since the pandemic began. While the company is expecting losses in Q1 of 2022, they expect profits for the rest of the year and stated that the impact of the Omicron variant appears to be behind us. In addition, JetBlue announced that it expects to be profitable again in quarter two. Alaska Air stated that, quote, we have recently seen demand start to recover with booking strengthening for President's Day and beyond. That being said, the fog may have finally cleared for airlines and an ETF like ticker symbol Jets could give your portfolio some solid exposure to a recovering industry. Now, these are only two macro trends to give you an idea, but this is how you can go about it. Think about the trends that you think are gonna happen to the world in the next few years. If the pandemic subsides, which industries stand to benefit? Ask yourself that and then invest in those sector-specific ETFs. Everyone's situation is different and depending on your risk tolerance and investment time horizon, allocations to different ETFs will differ. This strategy of investing in trends isn't for everybody, and it's a bit riskier than the three fund portfolio, which I've talked about in different videos before. Ultimately though, you guys know yourself the best, so don't feel like you have to try this strategy, but I hope that you gained a new perspective on investing by watching. If you'd like to get a little bit more insight in how I would build a portfolio for 2022, check out this video right here, and also make sure to subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you guys in the next video. All right, peace.